If both of our parents are fat and we end up becoming fat, is it safe to say that we inherited that fatness? There's a rare form of obesity. It's called monogenic obesity, derived from the variation of a single gene. Other than that form of obesity, we're dealing with the more common form of obesity, polygenic obesity, meaning it's dealing with multiple genes. What are they and how big is the influence of them? Let's take a look. If you are a legitimate DNA junkie, then here is a comprehensive visual of the actual gene sites that are associated with obesity related traits. But for us regular humans, what are we looking at? Why does this matter? Of what we know so far, DNA is vast, you understand me? The blue represents the genes related to variation in BMI. The purplish pink represents the genes related to variation in waist circumference and waist to hip ratio, which is kind of cool because they influence where your fat is ending up. The green represents traits of extreme obesity and the orange represents genes related to body fat percentage. Hold up, wait, body fat percentage? When I seen this, my eyes widen because we're more concerned about our actual levels of fat instead of just BMI. This looks promising and you wish that it would have the power to predict our relative tendency to put on fat. Like how likely am I to store fat? How inviting are my fat cells? But they don't predict that and truthfully it'll probably take years for us to find that out. So I know what you're thinking. These pie graphs with the, uh, wait, what are those, wait, what are those called? Venn diagrams, oh good lord, that took three Google searches. With Venn diagrams, the most shared traits are smacked in the middle with the overlap. This Venn diagram is the same thing, so this gene with all this overlap must be important. Ladies and gentlemen, we got it. Of the research that I've done, this is the gene that keeps coming up. It's in all the DNA and obesity talk, and it's known as FTO, the fat mass and obesity associated gene. This is the gene backed by robust science and the examinations of hundreds of thousands of individuals. And it means nothing. Kidding, kidding, kidding. Don't forget, common obesity has nothing to do with just one gene. It's, it's a multitude of genes that play a factor. FTO just happens to be the most prominent leading one. Remember, we all have the FTO gene. It's the variation that we're studying. If you ain't seen episode six and you watching this one, what, what, what you doing? There is a consensus that FTO is related to energy regulation and appetite, whether that's energy expenditure or energy intake. The FTO gene has no influence on any important hormonal influences on obesity, like leptin or insulin sensitivity. Insulin being the literal hormone that stores fat and leptin being the hormone produced by fat that tells the body when it's satiated. And you know, when we talk about fat, it's a hormonal disorder. So how important is the FTO gene really? This study states its variation was estimated to account for only 1% of the total heritability of BMI. And this study states the FTO variance provides only a slight increase in ability to predict obesity in comparison with conventional non-genetic risk factors and has no clinical utility. <sighs> This just means the entire gene and obesity conversation is not useful enough yet to predict obesity, let alone be used clinically, at least yet. So we don't even look at a person's genes to predict obesity, but instead we looked at non-genetic risk factors. If we take DNA out of the equation completely, there is a general correlation between parents' BMI and offspring's BMI. And majority of studies just look at BMI, but I found a study that looks at parents' BMI and offspring's not only BMI, but muscle and fat, so body composition, how much muscle, how much fat. They took hundreds of kids, age range from five to 21, and found positive associations between parents' BMI and their offspring's BMI, uh, fat mass and muscle mass. Not only that, but interestingly, the mother seems to have a greater association to her child's body composition in all three components rather than the father. Now, this study isn't perfect because they only looked at the BMI of the mother and father. Not only that, but it was based on recall. But if you wanna blame your moms, all of the literature agrees on one thing, and that is the DNA and environment conversation is complex. Are we the way we are because of our genes or the environment we live in? The contribution of genes to obesity risk is small, while the contribution of our toxic food environment and activity is huge. We don't have solid evidence of being hardwired to be fat through our genes. The answer leans more into our environment and our upbringing. Family history determines the threat of genetic predisposition. But even if both of our parents are fat and we become fat, that still doesn't guarantee that we were genetically predisposed or that we have a fat gene. Are the odds stacked against those that are genetically predisposed? No, but are there still odds that are stacked? Yes, meaning that someone who is genetically predisposed doesn't have to work harder to uh, lose weight necessarily, but their body won't give them the same amount of grace as someone who isn't genetically predisposed. Take basketball player Joel Embiid, for example. He doesn't necessarily have to work harder to be one of the premier centers in the league. He just has to make sure that he 
fuels himself properly and gets great rest because he's injury prone. And I guess I'm ending this video on a Joel Embiid reference. I'm gonna get up with y'all.